Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the four membranes of the body. You're looking here at the four membranes uh, that are in the body, and we had another video on the four tissues of the body. So the first question is going to be, what's the difference between a tissue and a membrane? Well, if you watch that video about tissues, what we said was that tissues uh, are basically uh, a group of the same cells or similar cells that have a specific function. Membranes uh, are going to sound very similar, but they are different. They're going to be uh, a layer of cells, okay, uh, with a specific function, but this is the thing. They can be multiple tissues. They can be different types of tissues. And our first example of that we're going to talk about is the cutaneous. So what's a cutaneous membrane? Well, the example of a cutaneous membrane, we're going to give you the location here, and that would be skin, okay? Skin is a cutaneous membrane. Now, skin is made up of epidermis, okay, and dermis. Epidermis, many of you already know, is cratinized, stratified, squamous, epithelium. I'll just kind of abbreviate epithelium. So epidermis is, is obviously uh, the, the tissue type is very lengthy, cratinized, stratified squamous epithelium. So that would be a tissue and that would be the outer layer of skin. The deeper layer of skin, as many of you know, is the dermis where we find a lot of the, uh, well, we find all blood vessels actually uh, uh, pertaining to the skin. There are no blood vessels in epidermis. We find the blood vessels, we find sweat glands, the oil glands. Um, that is going to be connective tissue. So it's actually going to be a type of dense, irregular, connective tissue. So right there shows us that this is one membrane, okay, of the body. This is obviously the most widespread of all the membranes. Uh, and it has two separate tissue types, right? One tissue being epithelium, the other being connective. So that's the difference with the membrane is they're going to cover different parts of the body, um, but they can be one tissue or multiple tissues, okay? So think of it as a different way to classify uh, the histology uh, of the body. Now, what about the mucous membrane? So mucous membranes are going to be found covering parts of the body that are exposed to the outside. So they're going to cover um, you know, different cavities and parts of the body that are exposed to the outside. So I'll try to abbreviate some of this. Cover body uh, surfaces exposed to the outside. Now, these first two, cutaneous and mucus, both have a very specific function, and it is to protect. These are both protective tissues. So you say mucus is a protective tissue. Yes, it's a protective tissue, and of course it secretes just that. The secretion would be mucus. Uh, it's a protective covering. This is the key thing, though. Could give a good example is uh, the lining of the mouth, right? It's considered a mucus membrane. Follow that down into the GI tract. Uh, think about the uh, intestines, the stomach. Those are still considered mucous membranes. Uh, they could also be called uh, mucosa, it's the same thing. But think about it. We, we have food, we eat the food, and it's touching those internal or inner regions of the organ, which we call the mucous membrane. So those inner linings of the organ okay, are exposed to the outside. The anal region is still exposed to the outside, right? The anal cavity. Uh, the vaginal uh, canal is still exposed to the outside, okay? And so that would make it a mucous membrane, okay? And so both of those first two are protective. Now, the next two are going to be lubricating membranes, okay? That is their function. The serous membrane is going to be very similar. It is going to cover the outer surface of organs. And this is the key thing. 
if the mucous membrane is covering the inner surfaces, the internal linings, and they're exposed to the outside, the serous membrane is going to cover the outer linings of the organ. Okay, so picture if you're looking at the liver, or you're looking at the outer lining of the stomach, <clears throat> or let's say the outer lining of the intestines, or the outer lining of the heart, or outer lining, whatever, you know, just pick, pick an organ, and not every organ gets kind of somewhat complicated, not every organ contains a serous membrane, but most of the organs that are uh, going to move, or move quite a bit, and therefore need to be lubricated, the best examples is going to be the heart, uh, the lungs, and some of the abdominal organs. They are going to have this outer covering called a serous membrane or serosa. Again, the key is that they, um, do, you know, they, they, they aren't exposed. Maybe aren't a better term here. They aren't exposed to the outside. Okay, they are not exposed to the outside. So again, best examples of this, I'll just put it right down here, would be our pericardium, which is that outer sac around the heart. That is a serous membrane. That's a lubricating membrane for the heart, okay? Uh, our pleura, which of course is the same thing, that outer lining uh, around the lungs to lubricate the lungs. And then the last one is the peritoneum. And it's going to be, again, seen in abdominal organs that have movement. The intestines move. Think about one that doesn't move, though. Kidneys don't move. So there's no peritoneum encircling uh, the kidneys, okay? So the peritoneum is going to do the same thing. Lubricate organs that are involved in movement, okay? So those would be serous membranes. The final one is going to be our synovial membrane, which, of course, lines the inside of synovial joints, okay? And again, it's gonna line the inside of the synovial joint, okay? It's gonna secrete a, a secretion called synovial fluid. And of course, like we just said, it's gonna lubricate. It's gonna lubricate, in this case, the synovial joints. Keep in mind, it's not every joint in the body. So we have other joints that are non-synovial, okay? And we'll have to do another video on that. But this is strictly going to lubricate all synovial-based joints, which are also referred to as a diarthrosis joint. So it's only going to be seen inside a diarthrosis joint. Okay, so that's our four membranes for the body. As always, I hope that helps. We'll see you next time. Good luck and good studying.